This video is a complete beginner's guide to Apple's compressor. Compressor is used to get very specific video file codecs from an exported video. It lets you set the exact level of quality you want on a video by setting how many megabytes per second there are. It allows you to set what container that video file is in. So it could be ProRes, it could be H.264 or HEVC. But also Compressor is absolutely essential when it comes to batch exporting. And I'll show you exactly why by the end of this video. So how do we get a video file into Compressor? One is to simply open Compressor and you'll see this big add file button. You can go ahead and click on that. Another way is to just simply drag in a video file directly off of, say, your desktop or wherever in Finder. And thirdly, in Final Cut Pro, you can go up to File, Send to Compressor, and then select New Batch. Once you have a video file inside, you'll notice that you have this basic timeline so you can scrub through your video. You also have the ability to trim down your video by clicking on the left and right handles of your video file. Plus, you can go through and add in chapter markers by clicking on this icon here. And you can even set the poster frame, that being the frame that shows up here inside of Finder, by going to the right of the chapter marker, clicking that down arrow, and selecting set poster frame. So we have our video file imported, but how do we change the settings for it? You'll need to come up here to the top left and make sure you click on this sidebar. Once you do that, you will see all of the built-in presets the compressor comes with. There's a lot because each of these can be expanded. For example, if we expand social platforms, you'll see all of these different versions we can use. Additionally, you'll have your custom presets, which can be saved down here. I'll get more into the custom presets in a little bit, but first, let's go ahead and start with one of the pre-built-in presets as our starting base. So what we can do is just simply click and drag any of these presets directly onto our video file. You'll see it turns white as it's highlighted, indicating that this video file is now receiving those settings. You'll notice that our viewer has changed quite a bit because now we have this slider here. The slider shows us that on the right side, is what the video file will look like after it's exported, and the left side is the original video file. This is a great way to find out if your video file is getting far too compressed when you are ready to export. Okay, so we've added on this preset, but we have no idea what it's doing to our video file. So what we can do is come up to the top right corner and click on the preferences icon here. Now, there is a lot to cover, and I'm not going to get into all of it, because honestly, if you don't know what a particular setting is doing, there's a pretty good chance you don't need it. I will show you what a few of the settings that are really important to know about, though. One quick setting here is we can change what our preset says. So right now it says up to 4K. Let's just go ahead and change this to say subscribe. So now this is the subscribe template. Now, there's other options inside of this general menu, but that's not that important to me. What is super important is this video panel. This is where the magic happens for Compressor. For one, we can change the resolution. So right now it's set to up to 4096 by 2304. So because it's set to up to, that means it's going to automatically adjust based on the file size that it already is. We can change the resolution by choosing one of these other variations here. So for example, we could choose 1280 by 720 or 640 by 360. Scrolling further down, we can change the frame rate. I almost always leave this on automatic. Right now it's 29.97. But you can change the actual frame rate of your video file if you want to. And you can do this all manually, which can be really handy in some specific situations. You have control over the color space. And this is going to be for those of you that are all about color space. I just leave this as automatic and it takes into account whatever your video file is. One super important menu you need to know about, though, is the codec menu. Right now it is H.264, which is probably the most widely used codec across the board. But if you open this up, you will see so many options here. And this is what you're going to want to take a look at if you ever get a spec sheet from a client where they have very specific specifications for how they're going to broadcast this particular file type. 
a codec is essentially a container for how the video file is presented to your computer. Moving further down, there's stuff like profile. Again, I almost never touch this stuff. Entropy, I don't even know what entropy mode does, so I don't touch it. But then you get to average bitrate, and this is a very important setting. So right now it is set to social platforms because we chose the social platforms preset over here, and that is 40,000 kilobytes per second which is actually 40 megabytes per second. So what we can do is change that over to custom and we can put in a very specific number here. And this is where you're gonna play around to find out the exact compression level you want for a video. The higher this number is, the larger your files are going to be. Now, for this, I'm going to use one of their presets. I really like computer playback as it's very high quality, but it keeps the file sizes pretty small. There's also stuff like keyframe interval. This is getting even more in the weeds. I just use automatic most of the time. Occasionally, I'll have a client that wants me to set it to every 30 frames or something like that, and that's when I'll change that. But for the most part, you'll want to keep it at automatic, and I just leave these settings checked. There is this super handy box here for cropping. Now, I could just go ahead and set this over to, say, a one-by-one -one resolution, and you'll see that chops it off on the right-hand side. If we slide our slider here, we can see the full box here. Additionally, there's this incredibly handy letterbox area of source. This file doesn't have any black edges, but if we were editing in Final Cut Pro and we put on a letterbox filter, if we were to use this particular option, Compressor would look and see that it has black edges and it would crop off those black edges giving us a file with the exact aspect ratio that we want. This is really handy if you want to upload a file and you want it to work well on, say, an ultra-wide display. And then at the bottom, we have quality. And this is essentially for your retiming and resizing. So I usually leave resize filter to linear. If you're getting really crazy, you can dive into that. But the retiming is really helpful. So let's say, for example, I needed to convert this over to 60 frames per second. This is a 30 frame per second video. I could set this to best machine learning or optical flow, and it's going to interpolate between the frames, giving us more fake frames, making our video look like it's 60 frames per second. Going further down, though, is video effects. And this is absolutely essential to know about if you're doing a lot of batch exporting from Compressor, because we can go in and let's say, that I want to correct a hundred different shots and add on an S-log LUT to all of them at the same time. Well, what we could do is, let's say we need to correct maybe the brightness a bit. We'll add in a brightness and contrast and we can just adjust that. But then we can add in another video effect and select custom LUT. And I'll just choose the LUT that I want to work with. So here's the LUT I want to use. I'll push open. And so now it's applying that LUT and we can adjust our brightness so it looks accurate. There aren't any scopes or anything like that in Compressor. It's not made for a lot of color correction, but this is great if you're exporting a ton of stock footage that you've shot or something like that. So now we've got this basic LUT correction and that is going to be baked into our video file. That way it's pre-corrected for whoever we are sending this to. And lastly, something that's really helpful to know in this video effects is the ability to add in text overlays, time code generators, or watermarks. So for example, we could add in a text overlay and just use this as our watermark. And I'll just type in subscribe because I'm cheeky like that. And we could set this to be centered. And then we could jump in and change the font and everything. So let's do bold, oblique, and maybe we want it to be 288. And so now we can see it showing up here in the frame and we could drop the alpha. So this is going to be our watermark over our video, making sure that the client pays us for all of our hard work. So now that we have that set up, it's time to save this as a preset and it couldn't be any easier inside a compressor. All you're gonna do is click and drag this file that we've changed and bring it over here to the left side. Anytime we wanna make changes to this preset, we just need to select it from over here on the left, make those changes and those will be saved for all time. So now that we've got our preset set up, this file already has it. We can see the preset's been applied here, but you'll notice that our location is set to source. That means that wherever the video file originally was in this example, it's on our desktop that's where it's going to save the exported video file. Except for in the instance of sending a file from Final Cut Pro into Compressor. In that instance, source is going to actually go to the movies folder. 
I don't know why it doesn't go to wherever your library is. I feel like that would be a lot more helpful, but it is what it is. If you need to change this location, you can simply right click and go to location and you'll see that we have desktop, movies, and source. But you can also add in custom destinations by going up here to the top left under locations, and you'll see that we can add in a location. So let's say that I want it to go to my tutorials Dropbox folder, and we could push choose. So now, if I want it to drop in over there, we can right click on our location, and we'll see tutorials Dropbox. Okay, so we have all of our settings applied. We are ready to export, and that is when we are going to push start batch. And that's gonna throw it into our active category here. And you can see that it's actually creating the video file right now. It's a whole bunch of different pieces because of export segmentation, which just means that it's going to export a lot faster. So that's why it looks totally chaotic over there. But now that it has completed its export, we can go to the completed tab and see it here at the top. And we can see that the status is successful, but we should also be able to see our video file here on the right side. So if I were to push play, we can see that it now has the LUT that we applied and it has that subscribe text that we applied. Plus it's also in the background using all of the various settings that we dialed in at the time of export. So that's the absolute basics of using compressor, but what if we want to take this up a notch? What if we want to make this the absolute batch export king? Well, that is where watch folders come into play. Let's jump back to the current tab and you will see watch folders. We can add in a watch folder from this window. So I'll just click add watch folder. Let's head on over to our desktop. We'll create a new folder and we could just call it watch folder. From there, we'll push add. Now we can choose what the base setting should be for this watch folder. So we'll just choose our subscribe template and push OK. So now we have this watch folder that's been added inside a compressor. And we have only one preset being applied, but maybe we want to always apply, say, two or three different presets onto a video file as it's been brought into the watch folder. Well, what we can do is push add and we can add in another template here. So let's go ahead and choose audio only. And that's gonna have all of those settings. We could jump in and change the quality on this and the bit rate and everything we want. But now that we've done that, every time we bring in a video file to our watch folder, it's going to automatically spit out a video with these settings. So we'll just check this box for watch folder. That's super important, otherwise it won't be working. And I can actually just hide compressor. It does need to be running in the background, but you can hide it so it's out of view. And so now I'll drag in my video into the watch folder. And it's gonna take a second here as it considers. So here it's loading it inside a compressor, but now it's created the output folder for that watch folder. And if we open up that watch folder, all of this is just running in the background. So I don't need to look at compressor. It's just automatically pulling off the process for me. And once it's done that, we can open our watch folder and we can see our video file with those settings was applied as well as an audio only version. If this video was helpful to you, maybe consider subscribing and helping me reach my lofty goal of 100,000 subscribers. That would mean so much to me. With that being said, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.